Many eyebrows raised on Modi government's decision to decriminalize certain laws. The Union Finance Ministry's decision to decriminalize some of the legislation's framed to control fraud has come under sharp criticism, especially in the case of dishonoring of checks under Section 138 NI Act or Section 29 of Surface A Act 2002, which hitherto dilutes major economic offenders like Vijay Malia, who vows huge amounts to the banks by diluting the criminal into a civil dispute. Interestingly, it's the Delhi Bar Council which has taken the initiative to oppose the government's proposal to amend as many as 39 provisions containing 19 different acts relating to payments and security of banking industry. They fear if the government is allowed to go ahead, then it would result in encouraging the minds of perpetrators to defraud and cheat innocent depositors and there would be absolutely no fear whatsoever left in the minds of high-tech and super-rich fraudsters on the prowl. Well, the government proposal to decriminalize inter alia Section 138, Negotiable Instruments Act 1881, may help unburden the courts of reducing pendency of cases of dishonoring of checks. But it will only increase the number of scams of banks' contra depositors' interests. In fact, the fear of criminal litigation and imprisonment happens to be the key component and paramount precipitating factor that ensures timely payments of the checks. This is what a seasoned public prosecutor and practicing lawyer Ramasarma Susarla of Telangana High Court feels. This is Sri Ram Sharma. Uh, uh, friends, the government of India is proposing to amend 19 financial acts, bills, that is what now says. The out of 19, we are related to uh, two bills that is very, very important, crucial. That is uh, uh, Negotiable Instrument Act, Section 138, and also the Surfraz Act, that is an whoever committed default in payment of bank loans, it is called Surfraz Act. We, 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 we let us talk about these two uh, because this is are very much relevant to every each and every individual person. See, first of all, the, what Section 138 uh, Negotiable Instrument Act says as on today, if anyone taken an amount of that is an illegally enforceable debt and issued a check without maintaining sufficient balance in his account and uh, upon uh, depositing that check as dishonored, then the person who has issued the check will be held responsible and he will be penalized and uh, two years punishment plus double the check amount will be given that is in a criminal in nature apart from the civil that is the recovery of suit. Now the Modi government is proposing to decriminalize this section. I don't know why because as on today, if anyone uh, uh, wanted to give a check, they will afraid. They will, they will afraid to issue a check because in the event of dishonoring this check, tomorrow he has to face a criminal prosecution. Now, that assumption and presumption and then apprehension is now about to remove. Then who will care? If, if you, tomorrow, if you don't uh, apprehend that your check will be dishonored, Oh, no guarantee at all. Civil case. Civil case, yes, together it will take. We have to pay the court fees, you have to pay the advocate's fees, and yes, together you have to come and roam to the courts. That is why I do, it, it is in against, against the public pulse, against public policy, against public uh, interest also. I don't know why Modi government is proposing to decriminalize Section 138 of a negotiable instrument act. Another issue is Safra's Act. That is an uh, Whoever committed default in payment of bank loans of huge amount of lakhs of um, lakhs and uh, crores of rupees. Now the CBI is initiating action against them. Now that is this decriminalizing. Now to, after passing this uh, act, there will not be any criminal charge against a defaulter. It is only a civil case, and then the banks has to file a civil suit that is before the debt recovery tribunal and recovery. No more criminal charge against the defaulter. Meanwhile, the Delhi Bar Council further said, and I quote, 
On one hand, the government has recently inserted Section 143A and 148 to make the NI Act more effective and powerful in providing redressal to the complaints with the further objective to strengthen the use of checks and distinct them from other negotiable instruments. Ironically, on the other hand, the government is enacting measures to decriminalize and dilute the Act, which is itself self-contradictory and unwarranted by the government. It further stated that decriminalizing such economic offences, especially Section 138, all these sections would become nugatory, rendered toothless, and the very purpose of enacting these sections or acts would be ultimately defeated. In view thereof, the Bar Council has urged the government to refrain from making any such changes in the NI Act, which blows the sanctity of checks, the banking sector, the business and the common man who treat the checks as a guaranteed payment. What shocks many who presume the honesty and integrity of none other than the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's cabinet colleague and Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman to take such decisions of amending strong litigations. Well, people might not have witnessed major scams during the last six years of Modi government. Yet, Finance Ministry's proposal to amend 39 provisions of 19 different acts may prove mother of all scams and sow seeds of suspicion among followers of Modiji. Meanwhile, it is gathered that the Union Ministry of Finance has invited comments from all stakeholders on its proposal to decriminalize several economic offenses. This is MS Purti for Orange News 9 TV.